What's up, guys? How you doing? Uh, Nate Robin, I'm here from Protoculture and back with another tech tip for you guys. A really simple little trick I want to show you guys today. This is particularly something I do uh, quite often when I'm doing um, more sort of driving trance tracks. Um, when you're trying to get that sort of um, driving 16th note uh, groove, um, I often try to make it a little bit more interesting by adding delay lines in. Just kind of provide sort of some syncopation with the with the the, the bass patterns and stuff. So um, it all sounds great, but uh, the problem that comes in is when you start changing chords and uh, you have delay lines bleeding into other keys. Um, I'm going to play you a bit of a track that I'm working on right uh, right now, and uh, you'll be able to see what I mean. So check this out first. Okay, the, the part in question that we're going to look at right now is um, one of these mid-bass parts. Um, I'll play it to you, soloed. See, when I stop it, um, there's quite a long uh, delay tail and even a bit of reverb in there as well. Um, you could go and shorten the delay, but I find sometimes that actually just ruins the, the groove. Sometimes the longer delays actually really make the the groove work quite well. Um, so my solution is to normally just bounce it to audio. Um, there's just one problem with bouncing it as is. Um, if you bounce them all together, you're going to get the, the same issue with delays running in. If you go and bounce them separately, uh, we can just use Cubase's render in place. I just have a shortcut set up for that. Um, you can do each key separately, which is what ideally what we want to do, except you run into one problem with this. Um, when we play this back, listen carefully to the transition from the first chord to the second chord. You see there's a, a, a few seconds there where it's actually dry signal because the delay line hasn't had the chance to kick in yet. And um, yeah, it you want that delay, well, at least for me, I always want that delay to carry on through the loop. So you don't have that sort of halt in the groove there. So a really simple way of doing that is to just undo this first. Um, when we bounce out each separate key, we're going to be essentially doing the same thing, except we need some extra because we are having to... Um, bounce out delay tail, which needs to follow through into the part that we're actually using. So we're just going to double up on everything that we have. Let's just move them over. And we'll just hit D, Apple D to duplicate everything. So those are our different keys. And we'll do the same render in place for each part. Now this is destructive, so I do recommend you do this once you have sort of an idea of where the track is going musically. Um, but you know, I don't find it too much of a an effort to do. Um, I, there are benefits to working in audio as well. Um, it's very easy in Cubase to chop things up. I do it quite often, uh, and it also kind of uh, prevents you from um, messing around too much. You know, once you are uh, uh, going down to order you kind of committed to to an idea which kind of i find focuses me quite often which is a good thing um great so we have these double parts now we're only going to be interested in using the second one because we have a delay tail from this one running through all in the same key so if we get rid of this uh move that one into place get rid of the first ones of each pair pull these back in you will find you have your delay running through each part. With no dry sections and no bleed into different keys at all. Which is great because that uh, 
will deal with a lot of problems for us later on in the mix. It can start getting very messy with delays if you are not careful. And I do suggest you do this early on when you can. Um, this kind of thing's not really easy to pick up by listening uh, at, at the end of the track when you're missing, uh, when you're trying to mix down everything. So, um, you know, make a habit of cleaning things up like this. Um, you know, often it can just be one little dial or feedback dial that's just a percent too high and the delays will just carry on and just make a mess of everything in the mix. So, yeah, this is good practice to bounce everything down and clean them up and, um, yeah, it'll help you in the long run at the end of the track. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, cool. Uh, see you soon. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.